So the first few steps of this build were absurdly straightforward. I took some of the ox horn, I clamped it in the vise, I drilled a nice wide, nice deep pilot hole, and that's step one. That's the end of step one. You're finished step one. There you go. Step two, also readily apparent, take your saw, saw off a slice from the horn that you built the hole into. There you go, you're, you're done. This is an earlier version of the ring that uh, broke, uh, I accidentally broke it while trying to clean it up a bit, but it fit my finger perfectly, so I'm using it to make an attachment for my Dremel for spinning the new ring on as you can see here. So yeah, obviously next step is put the ring on the plug I just made and then put that in the rotary tool and then spin it where I used files of varying grades and shapes uh, I used uh, the different sides of a sanding block. You know, lots of stuff for you know, shaping things. Technical terms, yeah. I got this idea from watching a video about how to make wooden rings. They were just kept gluing the ring to um, onto the outside of a dowel and then cutting the dowel out of the middle and I felt that was really kind of a waste of time. So I figured the easier thing to do would be to make something that could go between a sanding drum and the ring itself so that when you tighten the screw of the sanding drum it expands and it grips everything nicely and that worked fine. It worked perfectly. What I used to make the little in-betweeny bit, the, the drum, is green stuff, uh, nidotite. Um, it's a two-part epoxy putty used a lot in miniature sculpture and in plumbing. I even recently had to fix a pipe with it. It was my first time ever doing plumbing with green stuff and it worked! So yeah, cool. At this point, I'm using solid shampoo and solid conditioner. This was my brother's idea because horn is made out of keratin, which is the same stuff, same protein as your hair. So, shampoo and conditioner work. Here, uh, I'm breaking the stone. Just took a bit of tiger's eye and smashing in the bag so I can find tiny flecks. You may not be able to tell because of how much it's sped up, but I'm using a hand drill. I would recommend using a, an electric drill on horn this small. Just widening that out with uh, the rotary tool just a little bit. This is where the gemstone's gonna go. Yeah, see, just checking the stone if it fits. And that's a glob of gel super glue. Gemstone in. I left it for about a half hour before I came back out to do this. This didn't take as long as you might think. It's ju it's just grinding down a bit of it's not too hard stone. I imagine with something fancy like diamond or something it would take a lot longer. But with the tiger's eye it was fine. And back to spinning, so I can polish it up, get a nice finish on the stone, as well as uh, fixing up the finish on the horn. Because, you know, it got a little scratch while I was drilling. And yep, the solid shampoo and conditioner again. You can see how much shinier it gets when you use those. It works really well. I was dipping them in water in between putting them on. A little 
little bit of wire wool there. And a, um, a buffing disc, a, a polishing disc. And yeah, that is how I made my wedding ring. It's, I think it's pretty cool. I think it worked out fairly well. You could probably use this method. You could definitely use this method for bone. You can definitely use it for wood. You might be able to use it for stone, maybe. I don't know. You'd want to be more careful with that though. I'm, yeah, that's how I did it. I'm no expert, but I thought it was cool and that people might like to see. Ta-da!